Hello and welcome to the deep dive, spoiler-filled discussion of The Open House. Honestly, once I finished watching this movie, I knew that I had to come up to the office, start working on the video, make the title card here, make uh, the scoring system, and make the original review. But I've been dying to get to this moment right here where I can start saying, what the heck? What the heck is going on here? The, the whole nature of this uh how it wound up what i'm assuming is that it ultimately was just a madman that was that entered the house during the open house and start, stayed behind and was just messing with them hiding from the cops and so on and then moving on to the next house with the open house and so little of that makes sense in the context of the rest of the movie they set it up to be a supernatural thriller of some sort, either that or to have some grandiose, intricate thing. I swear that by the time the mother was being attacked and her fingers broken and so on, that I swear I thought that it was the father, that, you know, he he faked his death and was back and maybe wanted to erase his debts from the mob or whatever, and then when he came back, he saw... Chris, the guy sleeping on the couch and became enraged. I don't know. I don't know. I was, that's, that's, that's my point is I was spending the entirety of the movie and the way that the movie was set up was designed to do this, spending the entirety of the movie, making you guess at what's going on. And I love that. I actually really liked the movie up until the very end because what ultimately was going on was so unsatisfying. It was almost like Whatever theory you could come up with, the one that you wouldn't come up with because it was just like almost like a cheat is, oh, it's just a psycho guy. You know, it was like the woman with Alzheimer's, you know, they made her out to be the neighbor. She made her out to be super creepy. Did her husband die? Did he not? What's going on there? Did, uh, is she actually have Alzheimer's? Does she not? Why is she so sickly, sweetly nice, but still at the same time creepy? That was very well set up. The, uh, and the woman that was at the doorstep towards the beginning that, you know, why are you in my house? That was, uh, was that the same neighbor lady? I don't think it was. I think that was just something totally out of the blue. Why was that there? The, every single element of this played to the notion of something really, peculiar, sinister, grand, Machiavellian, and very complex is going on. And so my wheels were turning really hard, and ultimately, not just a psycho guy. Well, (laughs) that just feels like, I mean, it's not even laziness. It's just pulling the rug out from under me, and it didn't even answer that terribly well. The best answer you got from that was, the fact that the guy turned the truck at the next open house sign is like, okay, well, that's apparently just what he does. Not to, I'm going to talk about the uh, French movie High Tension for a little bit. If you haven't seen the movie, then you might want to consider whether you're going to or not, because this is going to have spoilers for that movie as well. The entirety of how that movie was set up was Psycho Killer, Stalker, Never really saw his face, or, you know, for a good portion of it, and almost otherworldly, but still just a psycho killer. Started that out from the get-go, continued on with that, and then it gave you a nice twist at the end that I thought was extraordinarily satisfying. How you, if you're going to have a psycho killer, you need to set that premise up from from the start, and you need to not lead the audience on in thinking that it's a different type of movie than it is. The Psycho Killer thing, it works. It's a good foundation. It's a solid premise for horror movies. It's tried and true. But make it so that the audience knows that that's the ride that they're in for. If you still want mystery to it, then make it the identity of them. The whole Friday the 13th, the original one, that was a great reveal. The fact that it wasn't Jason, or, you know, that the fact that it was Jason's mother and this sweet old woman that you know, was just kind of prowling around the campsite and you thought that there was safety there. That was a good twist, good reveal. But you knew from the get-go that it was a psycho killer. That is the 
general thing, you know, how you start, well, how you want to end, you know, start that way. And the way that this started was a complex, many wheels turning in diabolical opposition towards these characters. And it just was too stupidly simple. It felt like a cheat. That was my real take on it. And I've been dying to say that ever since I restarted recording the original review. I just couldn't do it. So every point that I mark down on the plot and the intent and so on, that's ultimately where it came from. To be perfectly brutally honest, every other part of the movie I enjoyed. The acting from the principal characters I really liked. How they set up the creepy factor between uh, the oddly intrusive Chris and the neighbor lady. Every bit of that I liked. The basement I liked. The house I liked. The set design I liked. The only thing that really kind of was you know, scratching at my brain a little bit was the notion of the sister who, I mean, just from the get-go, the sister who was oddly wealthy and owned this mountain home that she was trying to sell that was just grand and, you know, and the mother even kind of acknowledged that. Of course, she would have to have the biggest house. So obviously the sister is a little bit well off. Sister wants to help. So <laughs> why bother helping by helping, you know, pay the rent and keeping your sister in town and having her son uh, stay in the same school district and so forth? It's like, no, let's yank them from their lives, offer them this mountain home, and... <laughs> you know, start the course of the movie. It seemed like for a woman and a son that was mourning and a sister who was affluent and willing to help, it seemed like an odd direction to take them. But whatever, you know, they, they wanted to start the movie, they wanted to get a premise, and they wanted to, you know, hit the play button, and that's what they chose how to do it. Um, uh, the other main complaint I have, and it's minor, but it... The Milk... And there's a few examples like that, but ultimately, the milk, I think, is the biggest one. Honey, can you go to the store and get some more eggs? By the way, also, get the milk. It specifically showed him getting the eggs. It specifically went to the milk. The camera shot went to the milk where he didn't get it. Why? I was really expecting that to turn into something. I was expecting this to be a supernatural thriller where maybe, possibly, the ultimate question got raised of what did what, you know, what if he got the milk and that split second of time yielded posit, more positive results in the outcome of that character and the son is able to reverse things in a fantastical way i don't know but they spent a purposeful amount of time and effort on i remembered the eggs i forgot the milk and it never went anywhere it just seemed like so much of this movie was not just direction, but misdirection to ultimately get to the point of nowhere. So, that's my ultimate thought on it. Overall, I enjoyed the movie. Where it wound up ending, I thought was completely unsatisfactory and completely unsatisfying. And it's not that I regret watching the movie, but I'm close. So, yeah. If you disagree with me, if you agree with me, if you want to start a discussion, I invite you to do so on any of those counts in the comments below. I will be engaging with them, and I would love to hear from you. So, that's about it for the rotted review of the day and the deep dive discussion. Until next time, thank you.